interesting because that's I can tell you that that's sort of the middle of the bell curve and even like towards the higher end of the bell cor- curve of military performers are you know people that are can concentrate on the task they're going to be relatively obedient but when you get to either end either high end either the low end of bad performers but also the high end are the people that know when to break the rules that are slightly rebellious right. that will rebel that will tell you know one of the big ones is, you know i don't want to be surrounded by people that are telling me that i'm right all the time i don't want my subordinates i don't want to have people that are working for me that are gonna when i say go charge that machine gun nest they say okay and they go do it you might think that that's what i want and that might be the the overall perception of people in the military. I want a robot that's going to follow my orders. I actually don't. Mm-hmm. If I tell you to go charge that machine gun nest and it's not and it's going to get you and your men killed, I actually want you to say, "Hey Jocko, that doesn't sound like a good plan to me. Let's do something else. Let's come around to the flank." So, so it's interesting that yeah, you'll be good in that middle part and you might even get towards the higher end, but the guys that are really valuable in the military are the guys that also have that openness and that creativity. And are and at the same time are able to discipline it and harness it so right. that they can conform when they need to. Right. Well, and they need to be. Which discreet. I actually had to do as I got older. The older when I first got in, you know, I was the guy pushing the envelope. I long hair and so everything that I could do would maxed out to to stay within the bounds of what we were mm-hmm. supposed to be doing. And and then as I got older, I realized like oh, that stuff's not important. What's important is that you're able to do your job good and you have creativity, not with how you have your stupid haircut, but in how you come up with a mission plan. Right. And that's where I expressed my creativity, not through not through pushing the envelope of uniform standards, which is which is what a lot of immature young military guys do. Right. Right. Well, and the, the thing about. Uh um, the people who will stand up and tell you what they think is that they tend to be disagreeable types as well. And, you know, you hear a lot about emotional intelligence in the business world these days, but emotional intelligence is really indistinguishable from trait agreeableness. And so agreeable people are polite and compassionate, and that's great, especially if you're taking care of people. But you want some disagreeable people around because they'll tell you what they think, and they're blunt. Well, isn't emotional intelligence, though, can't you be agreeable but not be able to read? I always think of it as me being able to read people. Like I understand, oh, that person's got that's going on. That's their agenda is in the background. So even though I might be agreeable, but I'm also understanding where you're coming from. Well, I think that that's what emotional intelligence is, if it's anything valid. But the tests that test it tend to correlate uh, very highly okay. with agreeableness. And so, actually, agreeable managers don't make better bit managers. Oh, yeah. Disagreeable managers make better managers. Well, they have to be conscientious as well. Because right, right. a disagreeable person who's conscientious is actually relatively easy to work for because they'll tell you what they think, but they'll do what they say. You know, and they can make tough decisions, and you often have to make decisions that are somewhat harsh in order to move things ahead in the long term, right? Because if you're soft, it means you'll sacrifice the, sh- the long term for the short term. Right. And if you're tough, but, but have your head screwed on straight, it means you'll make tough decisions in the present that might ruffle feathers and hurt people's feelings, but they make the medium to long term better. And so no, that's that's absolutely true. I see that all the time, especially with younger companies. They go through that expansion phase, and all of a sudden they got to they they go through the retraction phase, and they got to fire people. Yeah, and and they wait because the the leader is too agreeable and too soft, and so they wait, and all of a sudden they're upside down financially, and it's a real problem. Yeah. Whereas if they would have been aggressive and said, you know what, here's the decision we got to make. I know it's going to hurt right now, but long term it's going to be good for us. We got to get rid of this division or this department or these people. And if they don't have the ability to do that, it really hurts them in the long run. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the sacrifice of the future for the present, and that's generally a bad idea. The other thing with